Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that we've featured on the channel somewhat extensively over the years, but we haven't really played much of lately, and that game is Ultimate General Gettysburg. Now we're going to be playing this game in part thanks to uh, Jean Marciniak, the strategy wargamer, because in our last episode, the podcast that him and I run together is called Single Malt Strategy, in the last episode, we were talking about games that we've been playing lately, and I had been talking about how I've really fallen back in love with Sid Meier's Gettysburg. It's one of those games that I think I will always uh, love, if only because of a nostalgia factor for that game for me. But in addition to that game, it just does some really interesting things. The sort of dynamic multi-day campaign with linked scenarios and carryover results uh, that occur throughout the Battle of Gettysburg. And, you know, Jean or, or the Strategy Wargamer made the point to me, hey, listen, you know, in his opinion, Ultimate General Gettysburg is the pinnacle of that. They took everything that was great about, uh, about Sid Meier's Gettysburg and they made it better. I had a divergence there where I think some of the production value things, some of the cameos, some of the ways that the game builds atmosphere are a little bit more effective in Sid Meier's than they are in Ultimate General. But in any event, I figured why not revisit the closest uh, spiritual successor to Sid Meier's Gettysburg, in a game that, while similar in many regards, is also uh, very unique in others. The, the game definitely borrows from some of the themes of Sid Meier's Gettysburg, but there are some pretty noticeable divergences as well uh, that I think make it a rather interesting game, and a game that is very unique in its own right. Uh, my thought is I'm going to go ahead and play through a campaign in Ultimate General Gettysburg from July 1st to the conclusion of the Battle of Gettysburg. This time we're gonna fight as the Union. Our last playthrough we fought as the Confederacy, so I figure we'll go ahead and fight as the Union. We'll see how that all plays out. And then what we'll probably do later in the month is we'll take a look at uh, Scourge of War. So if you were to say, what are the two games that most closely resemble uh, Sid Meier's in the more modern uh, time frame? I think you'd have Scourge of War slash Take Command, which came first, uh, that are much more tactical level battle simulators, more groggy, more detailed, a little bit less pretty perhaps, uh, but they're certainly uh, games that draw a lot, but are also very unique in their own right. And then you have Ultimate General Gettysburg, which uh, in some ways stays more true to Sid uh, Meyer's game, but also has, again, some very noticeable divergences. Sid Meyer's Gettysburg is very much a game that threads the needle between uh, what Scourge of War is and what Ultimate General is, where Sid Meier's is kind of the, the middle road. Ultimate General and, and Scourge of War are sort of uh, either uh, on either side of it. Not necessarily better or worse, they're just different. Uh, so I figured let's go ahead and take a look at Ultimate General Gettysburg tonight and fight a battle as the Union. So we're going to fight as the Union here in the campaign. You can see there's a, a brief write-up about the differences between the two armies. Uh, the Confederate soldiers are universally high-spirited and courageous, so that means they must have high morale. They're able to sustain heavy fire without breaking and are hard, experienced troops. Confederate equipment is, uh, is, though, less advanced compared to the Union, and they lack professional military training, leading to a disadvantage in prolonged engagements at range. So it seems like they benefit from melee combat, close-ranged combat, and the Union benefit at longer-range combat. The Union deploys efficient artillery. This is definitely true in, in the historical context. Better drilled infantry and better equipment in battles in order to tackle the enemy with orderly and intense fire. I don't know about the better drills, but in any event. However, most Union generals are uninspiring compared to the Confederate Army leaders. This causes poor performance in close combat and average morale. Again... Uh, the game has to make some differences between the two sides for gameplay point of views. Um, they definitely make some generalizations. There are some accurate pieces in there about the Union artillery being better than the Confederates, and perhaps uh, some of the Union units having better morale. Uh, certainly morale, perhaps, but not necessarily something that would impact performance at the Battle of Gettysburg, as the battle itself would show. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and fight as the Union. On the difficulty scale, we're going to do dynamic difficulty. Uh, so... That way the, the computer's not too aggressive, and uh, it is at the hardest level of difficulty, but it's sort of middle of the road of aggression for the AI. So I think that's probably the best approach for me to go to battle with, so we'll go with dynamic difficulty. Uh, or, yeah, dynamic uh, middle aggressiveness, 
high difficulty. Hey, Neuhauser. All right, arriving at Gettysburg, 1st July, 1863, 9.30 in the morning. Available forces for the Union, 2,264 soldiers and six guns, with 9,299 reinforcements on the way and an additional 28 guns. The Confederates outnumber us almost 2 to 1 at the start of the battle. They have 20 guns, which outnumbers us more than 3 to 1, but they have 4,182 soldiers. They have 9,000 reinforcements on the way with less artillery than us on the way. There's two Confederate brigades ready to advance on Gettysburg. My mission is to delay them until the Army of the Potomac arrives and occupies high ground south of town. More enemy reinforcements are expected to join the attack. I will only have a few cavalry units at my disposal, but the 1st Corps is close to Gettysburg and will soon join your forces. Your mission is to hold as many locations as possible to delay the Confederate advance and attempt to drive them back to Hare Ridge. McPherson's Ridge is a good starting uh, defensive position, Seminary Ridge must be held at all costs because it protects the reinforcement route. If you lose all of the locations, you lose the Battle of Gettysburg early. Good luck, General. Okay, so you can't lose all the objectives or you lose the battle. You can see here the forces that we have on display initially are the Cavalry Corps, uh, which uh, reports to Pleasanton, but Buford's the Cavalry Commander. Uh, he has Gamble's skirmishers, some detached skirmisher units, some vedettes. Uh, Devon has some skirmishers, and Caleb has a battery of artillery. Thank you very much for the bits there, Tasty Sandwich. I really appreciate it. Uh, definitely uh, appreciate the support there. Um, and the Confederate forces that we're going to be facing here are going to be of General A.P. Hill's Corps, uh, the 3rd Corps Artillery Reserve, Pegram's Artillery Battery, and I'm assuming Archer and Davis's of... Uh, East Division. So uh, those are the forces arrayed. A Shit. Fuck. Ah! Did I exit out of the battle? I don't know how I exited out of the battle. Whatever. Um, there you go. So I must have hit exit somehow, and I don't remember how. So why don't we just go and jump in and fight before I fuck anything else up? Hey, J Street. All right. Um, no. So you can see here we've got troops on McPherson's Ridge. Uh, we've got skirmishers. There's these two Confederate brigades that are moving up. We've got Devon's Vedettes, which I'm actually going to swing around here to make sure that the enemy doesn't flank us. I'm going to go ahead and have Devon's skirmishers advance on him. Archer's Brigade is going to be engaged by both Gamble and uh, both Gamble skirmish units. The Vedettes will swing around here to the left, and that's how I'm going to deploy my forces. We need to hold this ridge line really by the end of the day, Oak Ridge, Oak Hill, and Seminary Ridge. Uh, we have no objectives in and around McPherson's Ridge, but it gives us the opportunity to uh, delay the Confederates, hopefully. Um, so you can see here we've got these vedettes, which are losing heavily. We're going to go ahead and have them retreat to the north. Maybe they'll pull Davis off. Devon's skirmishers here are firing into Davis's flank, but they're also getting hit by Heath's skirmishers. So I'm actually going to send these vedettes this way. Uh, meanwhile, Archer is charging Gamble's skirmishers. You know what? These vedettes should really charge. I don't know if they can do that or not. So Devon's vedettes have pulled Davis way to the north. Meanwhile, Devon's skirmishers are running. Charge into the rear of Archer here. Maybe we can at least deal Archer a bit of a blow. Holy shit, Gamble's skirmishers are getting just ravaged there by Archer's brigade. Can you please go over there? These guys have, like, no morale. Oh, shit. Wait, these are just skirmishers. My skirmishers outnumber them, like, two to one. All right. Devin's Vedettes head south. Hopefully you'll uh, annoy Davis again and pull him away from you. Meanwhile, Archer... This is just... The one thing... I don't really like how this first scenario is formatted in... The um, can they charge these guys? Feels too free form and too. Um, I don't know what the right word is, but essentially it doesn't really feel very. Authentic's the wrong word, but it just feels like it's a vid like. There's no reason Davis would be charging after 140 skirmishers mounted on horses way to the north, and it just feels a little bit. Uh, Chaotic, I guess, maybe is the right word. 
But in any event. Not that the battle wasn't chaotic, just I don't I don't think this mirrors reality. Alright, so the first corps arriving on the field. Cutler's Brigade of 1,500 soldiers. Uh, the Iron Brigade of the East, I believe it was. Going to go up here to Oak Ridge. And then uh, Meredith's Brigade, Iron Brigade, will go down here to Seminary Ridge. So we'll have one brigade at each location. Meanwhile, the Vedettes are at least pulling Davis north and distracting him. Archer, meanwhile, is trying to charge... Oh, God. Gamble skirmishers here. What do I do with the other vedettes over here? Why don't you guys go deal with that artillery there? You can see Archer's actually being pushed back. His uh, flag icon is, is white, which means that uh, he's retreating, or at least falling back. Now, Gamble's skirmisher unit here is suffering heavily, uh, but the other skirmisher unit over here has got 500 men that can fire into Archer's flank. We've uh, pulled this artillery back here to Oak Hill, Oak Ridge. And uh, we've got Devon skirmishers over here. The vedettes were destroyed, so the hundred or so vedettes we had are gone. Uh, all right, I want you to run the fuck out of there, Devon. Cutler and the Iron Brigade are here. Stevens, so we've got some additional artillery coming up. J Street, thanks for the bits. Thank you both, uh, J Street and Tasty. For the support. Definitely appreciate it. Alright, so we've got a couple of artillery batteries that are going to set up here on Seminary Ridge. We've got infantry coming up for Oak Ridge. Devon's skirmishers are pulling back. General Robinson's division is also coming up now. So Cutler, you're going to, I think you're going to move at the run now. You're close enough where I want you to get there quickly. Robinson's division should be coming on the field over here to the east of Gettysburg. I turned on the uh, map elevation piece, which is one of the things I think is really great about this game. Um, the Ultimate General Civil War... Oh, the Vedettes didn't die. They're over here. Ultimate General Civil War does not have map elevation on the game, or at least it doesn't have it mapped out like this with like a topographical map, which I think is kind of a shame. Um... The inclusion of it here, I think, is brilliant. All right, Davis is going to try and move toward Oak Hill. really don't care about that. I'm actually going to have Cutler move forward here. I'm, I probably lose Oak Hill. I'm fine with that. Got my artillery. On Oak Ridge. The Iron Brigade is on Seminary Ridge to the south. Got Paul's Brigade, and I don't know who, is this Brewster's? Or Baxter's Brigade? Coming up here through the town. Again, Oak Hill is, is a nice to have, but Oak Ridge is the key, I think. Let's go ahead and have you guys advance on Archer. Maybe you can throw him back. These skirmishers will move back here. The Vedettes will move on the flank. The Confederates have taken Oak Hill. Again, not really my concern at the moment. There we go. Cutler just got a great volley in on Archer. Drove him back. Massive brigade here. I'm assuming this is these are some of... This might be Pettigrew's brigade. Look at all these men. Good God. The other, one of the big differences between Sid Meier's Gettysburg and uh, this game is that this game represents units at the brigade level, whereas Sid Meier's uh, represents it at the regiment level. General Doubleday's division is coming up, so we've got more infantry coming. All right, I may launch a counterattack on Oak Hill if the opportunity presents itself. There you go, Pettigrew's 2,500 men. Meanwhile, Cutler is, uh, his troops are in good cover, 78% cover, and they're shooting at Confederate artillery, which is out here in the open, uh, which at, at their extreme range, but at least doing some damage to these guns. 
Butler's going to have to deal with Pettigrew coming up here. Skirmishers go by time. The debts also go by time. You guys, run. You're close enough now where I want to get you into position to make sure we don't get flanked. Biddle, you'll form up here to the south. These vedettes, you'll swing north. Again, their morale is low. So we'll see how this all plays out. But we're going to put Biddle on the Iron Brigade's flank here. We can't afford to lose Seminary Ridge. This is the key objective. Reynolds, you're still alive, so let's get you out of, like, this open field. Riding out there like an idiot. All right. Davis is exposing his flank. These guys' condition is still 60 plus, so they're in relatively good shape. Davis is being lured away, I think, by these uh, vedettes here. They're shooting at him from the front. We're actually going to move Paul's Brigade forward to see if we can retake Oak Hill. Bucktail's Brigade's coming up. Biddle's moving into formation to the south of the Iron Brigade. And Cutler is engaging Pettigrew. Pettigrew is in the open. And Cutler's got like five batteries of artillery all firing into Pettigrew as well. But he's in good shape. So I think, for the moment anyway, things look good. Paul might be able to retake that objective. These guys' morale is only seven, so they're very low. These guys' conditions down to 40. That's fine. I'm not going to charge them or anything. We're going to bring these two brigades here, the Bucktail Brigade and Baxter's Brigade, in on Davis. You know, Paul will keep advancing. Pettigrew's coming back again. we got sort of a light skirmish line of infantry linking up with the artillery, which gets us up to Cutler up here. Ender's three brigades have been spotted by the Chambersburg Pike. We are seriously outnumbered. Doesn't feel like it. I mean, they have a thousand more men than us. I wouldn't call that seriously outnumbered, but whatever. All right, so Paul is almost onto the Oak Hill. Meanwhile, where these other enemy infantry are, I haven't spotted them yet. I think this is the Chamberburg, Chambersburg Pike, so they're back here. You can see them just coming into sight. All right, so once we retake this, I'm actually going to flank Davis with Paul. Actually, let's do it now. I think we'll actually take it in any event. Yep, there you go. I'm going to run because I don't want to get shot in the rear. Paul's going to need to get out of... Davis is already retreating. I don't know. problem is by running, I use up a lot of fatigue like to pursue Davis and, and destroy him if I can. It's a large brigade, so if we can destroy it, that would be great. We've only lost about 50 men between these two brigades facing Davis. Meanwhile, they've inflicted over almost 300 casualties between them, and now Paul's going to add some fire to the flank. I'm actually going to close him in a little bit more. Baxter forward. The skirmishers may go back and try and take Oak Hill. That's fine. Archer's pretty weak. I'm not too worried about him. Butler. I don't have any reserves on Oak Ridge, by the way, so that's a little bit of a concern. You can see them actually moving scales and Archer toward Oak Hill as well. All right, so Davis is getting pretty shot up now. Hopefully his brigade is not going to be very uh, usable for the rest of the fight. The one thing I've noticed, or not the one thing, but one of the big things I've noticed with this game is that uh, casualties... Units will reappear in battles, and that's fine, but casualties taken early in the battle, like these guys have lost 200 or 400-plus men 
they're never really going to fully recover that morale. These casualties are going to have an impact on their morale far longer than, uh, than you would otherwise think. Or that's the way the game seems to work to me anyway. Also, one big difference between this and Ultimate General uh, Civil War is that Ultimate General Civil War models ammunition. As far as I can tell, this game does not. Now, it doesn't look like they're pushing on Seminary Ridge, so I'm actually going to move Biddle and the Iron Brigade forward and see if they can push back Brockenborough, and if they can, then they may also be able to roll up Pettigrew's flank. Because the vast majority of the Confederate troops here are deploying to the north. I'm actually going to bring Bucktail down here. Their condition is zero, though, so that's not great. Oh, shit. Davis might flank him. Cutler, meanwhile, is giving a little bit better than he's getting. Our artillery does appear to be firing. I'm going to move Reynolds up here into the gap. Also move Stevens up here. Doesn't look like either of those batteries is doing anything. The rest of the batteries are. Alright, Iron Brigade's moving forward. Goes Biddle. We have some artillery here. Gonna hurt a little bit. Alright, melee coming. A nice volley in at point blank range. I think we drove him back. Thank you again for the J Streets there, or the Chase Streets, for the uh, bits there. I'm just going to call bits J Streets now. All right, Cutler's getting shot up a bit. Paul is actually pulling back. Where's my generals? All right, Reynolds, go up there in the north. Give him some inspiration there. All right, you're going to charge Brackenborough. And then you're going to roll up Pettigrew's flank. That's my plan. Sticking to it. They're really pressing hard up to the north. Paul's morale's recovering a bit. Got Reynolds up here trying to inspire some of these guys. Buford should probably go somewhere where his troops are. So Biddle is, I don't even know what he's doing. He's engaged in melee, by the looks of it, with Brockenborough. I'm going to go ahead and have the Iron Brigade charge him, too. Great if they would fire off their volley before they run into them with bayonets. Like, why are they charging? That's the, I don't understand why they're charging through him. Can't you guys shoot at Pettigrew's flank from here? Sort of. You're not doing much. So both of these brigades here are engaged in melee. Both exhausted. That's no one's really doing anything. We're hanging in there. I think the battle's almost over. Didn't really want this fight to go quite the way it is. I was hoping we could like destroy this Confederate brigade, but by the looks of it, we're all just sort of slowly staggering west and just waiting, dreading to see Pettigrew's two thousand muskets leveled on my troops. But I think the fight's almost over in any event. At least according to the this timer, which is going from left to right. Now, this goes left to right. When the green gets all the way to the right, the battle ends. 
Uh, the battles can be extended, however. So if the enemy gets close to an objective point, then you can have the battle delayed, and then this whole bar can fill up a second time uh, all the way up to... Uh, ooh, nice. So by disengaging... Not sure if it was by disengaging uh, the Iron Brigade? Yeah, they fired a volley into Rockenborough at point-blank range, and there Biddle did as well, although Biddle's men were much less effective with it. We just inflicted nearly double the casualties that uh, that Brockenborough had taken there, just with that extra volley. But yeah, if the enemy gets close to an objective point where they're threatening it, the battle can be delayed. As you can see up here, the battle is delayed. I'm assuming because these troops are close in to where the 750 victory point icon is, and you can see it's starting to fill up with red, uh, and the battle won't end until either the threat is gone or the uh, icon fills up all the way. We could try and go for Hare's Ridge. I think if we get there, I don't know if we win the Battle of Gettysburg or if we just... I'm not really quite sure how that works. How about you shoot at Pettigrew, who's literally right there in the open. You guys shoot your goddamn artillery at him. Baxter's taking a lot of casualties. Alright, there you go. The Iron Brigade's back is to this enemy artillery, which can't be good for morale. But, they're going to get to fire a volley into Pettigrew's disorganized troops as they run. There they go. Firing into his troops, you can see the Iron Brigade's inflicted almost 700 casualties, losing only 260 of its own. So we're doing Pettigrew a uh, pretty good uh, ration here. And because Pettigrew fell back, Cutler can shift his fire back over to Lane now, who is also falling back. Aaron Brigade's flank is directly exposed to this artillery, which is not great. There you can see Pettigrew losing a bit more. Also, as morale is lost, I believe the troops lose some of their effectiveness as well. Let's see if uh, Lane's brigade's been shot up pretty badly. Pettigrew's lost, I think, a thousand men as well. So he's lost pretty badly as well. Aaron's charging in on either Baxter or Paul, one or the other. Can't tell which. Try and take Oak Hill. We've got about 2,000 men in defense, about 2,300. The enemy has about 1,800 charging. All right, the Iron Brigade's getting hit from three sides from this artillery. So that's not going to... I'm going to move Cutler north. Some of these skirmishers as well. The Bucktails can fire into them. Baxter's, his brigade is not going to be effective anymore. I would have thought we would have had more reinforcements. I thought there was one more division that we were waiting on. Meredith... Apparently regained some of his morale. Oh, it's Biddle whose morale's vanishing. Alright, Perrin should be retreating now. He's just got hit by two batteries of artillery firing into his flank, as well as a battery of infantry, or a brigade of infantry firing into his flank. It says we lost Oak Hill. So maybe we will lose this first fight? I'm not sure. All 
All right, there goes Baxter. How many men did he lose? Can't even see. Where are your goddamn muskets at these guys? Not engaged. There's no reason you can't shoot at them. You're getting shot at. There you go. Not doing much damage with your muskets, but hey. At least you're shooting. Bulls retreating. Iron Brigade fall back to here. Aaron is actually falling back. That's interesting. So if we actually look at casualties here, the Confederates only have 8,400 men left. We've got 7,600. I don't know why the scale is from left to right. Maybe that's how much we're winning and not manpower. Not quite sure. Yeah, they've got three brigades up and over there. Archer's brigade's largely shattered, though. Aaron also has lost huge casualties. Treating across the front of Cutler's brigade, which should be able to fire into his flank as well. Says the morale's going up here, but it doesn't appear to be going up very much. I believe they can only fire volley fire if the morale is over 40. But in any event, even fire at will did some damage there. Now the game's saying we're winning at Oak Hill now, so we may be able to just maybe push these guys back. Scales is retreating. So we just secured Oak Hill now. I don't think the Rebs are going to have enough force to push back and take up there. My real risk would be Oak Ridge. You can see here Brockenborough is trying to sneak his brigade forward in on Seminary Ridge, but I don't think he's going to have the manpower to do it. Not with more than twice his number waiting for him over here, the Iron Brigade. But again, these some of these units' morale is going to be largely shattered. Scales is retreating. Davis is still up there on the flank. Battle has been delayed much longer than uh, I would have preferred. I was hoping the fight would end right away. Bucktails are falling back. Baxter's regaining some of his morale at least. He's up to 40%. He's lost 600 men. Wow. Some of these units have lost a lot more than they've inflicted. Assuming our, my artillery's done well. I'm trying to figure out what the discrepancy is. Almost all these units have lost more men than they've killed. Maybe it's somewhat made up for by our artillery. All right, the battle's about to end. Two minutes and ten seconds of game time. Sir, it seems that in a few minutes the battle will end. Both armies are exhausted and need to resupply. Okay. So I think we've got the advantage here in the green. The enemy has about 700 more men than us still, but I think they actually lost more casualties than we did. Uh, minor victory for us. So we did win, but it was a minor victory. It ended at 1307, so 107. We held Oak Ridge, Oak Hill, and Seminary Ridge. We lost 4,200 men. The enemy lost 5,300 men. We take a look at the statistics here. Losses. Uh, the Confederates' Pettigrew's Brigade lost almost 1,000 men. They only inflicted 150 casualties. Davis's brigade lost 785 men. They did inflict 836. Brockenborough's brigade, nine, or 761, only about 200 inflicted. Archer, about 700 to about 400 inflicted. Meanwhile, our brigade, Paul's brigade, lost 600, inflicted 300. Baxter lost 600, inflicted 300. Lane and Perrin both lost around 600 men, inflicting less than they took as well. Where's the, uh, where's the difference here? Like, where did we make up all these kills? Davis... All right, Cutler made up some of the difference. So did the Iron Brigade. Reynolds Battery, 670 kills versus only seven casualties. Bucktail's about even. I don't know where the Confederates made up the casualty differences. Maybe their artillery did some 
some good ca casualty ratios there. Some of their batteries did did well. Um, if we pull out just to artillery, so in general the artillery did well. Um, McGraw's battery was nearly destroyed. They lost 72 men. They've got about 17 or 89 left. Um, Brander's battery lost 29 men as well, about half their strength. Uh, Mary's battery is red here. I believe they're destroyed. 61 men lost, uh, only 14 remaining. Guns are men, but in any event, the red means routed from the field, I believe. I don't know if there are any infantry or cavalry units right from the field. Devon's vedettes, sure, but I'm not too worried about losing the vedette unit. So that's the situation here. We're now presented with three options to continue the battle. Uh, we can defend the ridges north of Gettysburg at all costs, which basically holds us in our, exi our existing positions. We can withdraw to Seminary Ridge and reinforce Cemetery Hill. Uh, and then we can ignore Oak Hill and defend the southern ridges. But those fights will be for another time. We've been going for a little over 30 minutes. We're through the very first of the scenarios of Ultimate General uh, Gettysburg. And we won the first battle with a minor victory. We'll see how the battle plays out in our future videos. Uh, but until then, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.